here to talk about math centers and how they fit into the guided math structure, what types of math centers I have, and what the different purposes for the different units are. Um, we're going to start by just running through the general guided math structure for independent station rotations. And I'm going to share my little acronym that I use to tell me what types of activities to put out for students. And then we'll jump right into focusing on math centers. So, a couple years ago, I came up with an acronym called Math Stack. And within that guided math structure, I used Math Stack to give me five station activities. So each letter in the word stack is going to give me a type of activity that I'm going to put out. Let's start with S in math stack. That's going to be small group. My students don't know, they just come to me. Um, so for small group, the resource that I use is the guided math units. This is going to give me 20 lessons for each math strand. So this particular strand is time and measurement. I have these lessons for K to four, and um, they the guided math units give you warm up, whole group mini lessons and all the materials for those, and small group lessons and all the materials for those. So there are nine different strands that cover all of the standards for the year for whichever grade level, K, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, you can teach these strands in any order as well, so it won't mess them up to align them to your district's um, order. So that's the S in Guided Math Stack. Next we have the A, I'm sorry, I can't spell stack, I'm leaving it because I don't want to do this video again. <laughs> All right, T, math stack, T for technology, and that's going to be when you have students apply their learning on different devices. So whatever device you may have access to, but students are going to play apps and websites and programs to um, show their math skills. Um, and Math on Technology is going to be um, the resource that I'm sharing. It, I only have it for first grade, so um, I know that's very limited, but um, I have two sets for the year. One is called Tech Tasks, and one is called Interactive Math Games, and again, those are both only for first grade. Sorry about that, but next we have the A in Math Stack, and that's the application station. That's where I can take a grade. Um, it's an independent practice station. So it's gonna show me what students understand from the small group lessons, from the whole group lessons, when they're working by themselves. Um, the resource I use for Math Stack application, sorry about the weird cam camera angle. Um, these are all two different resources. The first and the main one is called um, Guided Math, it's just called Math Supplements, and within that bundle, you will find all the different math strands, so um, graphs and data, don't look at this, time, here's a third grade fraction, so they're by different math strands, and these are going to give you um, printables to put into that application station, so to show you if your students are understanding the concepts that you're teaching, in whole group and small group. These again are um, K to 4 and they're called math supplements and these are called math um, practice pages because in the math supplements bundle you can also get exit tickets and math chats as well. So um, if you want all of them then it's exit tickets, math chats, and math printables and those are going to give you again 20 different activities on that math strand. All right. So after A, we have C. C is my creation station. That's our math journal. And I get a question um, over and over on Q&A about math journals and numbers notebook. Where did I put them? Here they are. So oh, let's talk about it, OK? Um, they do not overlap, but they are different. So the math journal set for the year is going to give you nine volumes. Each volume has 25 activities, and the types of activities in math journal are spiral review activities throughout the whole year. So 
within that one volume, I might have graphing, money, place value, number sense, addition and subtraction, whatever it is for my particular grade level. And they're going to become difficult, more difficult throughout the year. So it's a way to spiral review and to make sure your students are growing and not forgetting concepts all through the year. If you would rather be matchy-matchy, then this one probably isn't right for you. Um, although you could sort it by skill if you wanted to. So that's going to give you, so math journal is spiral review and um, it will become difficult through the year as students grow and mature. So it's going to help with their automaticity and their fluency on the different math concepts. Um, then we have our numbers notebook. Numbers notebook is by strand. So like the guided math units, like the printables, it's going to be here's all your money activities, here's all your time activities, um, and so on. So this one is set up where you'll have a volume that's all on time, a volume that's all on place value, a volume on multiplication. And um, you can rearrange them in any order, but you'll have all of those activities in that group rather than in spiral review. So math journal, spiral review, gets more difficult through the year. Numbers notebook, you get all 25 activities of that one strand in each volume, and you get nine strands total, which matches guided math um, and the math supplements. Okay. The next and final station in math stack is my hands-on, my kinesthetic station. So this is where students will apply their uh, mathematical understanding in a hands-on math center. And this is where um, I get a lot of questions. So I have different math center sets and they are different for different reasons. None of them overlap, neither do my journals. So please don't ever worry about if I buy two sets, am I gonna buy double um, or of the same information? No, don't worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna go through and talk about <clears throat> the different sets and their purpose and why they were made. All right, and what, what value they have for your station activities. So let's start with the first set I made, which is going to be my monthly math center. So let's start. We're, these are gonna be, whoa, hi. <laughs> these are gonna be K to two. I have 30 for it, so don't panic. But um, the monthly math centers are by month, and they are seasonal. So this is where, if you like a good theme, like back to school and September apples and October pumpkins and ghosts and spiders, this is gonna appeal to you. Um, the skills in these math center sets are spiral review. So if you like spiral review, like the math journal set, you're probably going to be more drawn to the monthly math centers. That's the name of this, monthly math centers. Again, I have them for K1 and 2. And so inside you'll find themed stations and seasonal stations for that month. So this is the back to school months of August and September. So you'll have all back to school types of activities. Um, and they will spiral up you. Now they're going to be heavy hitting on number sense, of course, at that first month because that's what our students really can um, mostly do. Another thing about the math center sets, you get 10 stations, you get 10 principles, which again, just to remind you, are great for the application station, and you get 10 journal entries, which are good for your creation station. So if you are following stack, that's going to give you 10 activities for three of your different um, stations. And they're again seasonal and spiral review. So the math monthly math centers are seasonal and they spiral review and you get 10 centers, 10 journals, and 10 printables. Here's another month of the same set. Okay, so this one is February. Again, the clip art is now going to be all valentine -y. Um, it's not necessarily holiday themed. I know a lot of us can't do holidays, but it will um, touch on the seasons. So if that 
that's a problem then it's good to know. Um, in this particular box, I have K1 and 2 all together. Um, for my friends that like that have like to, that are teaching multiple grade levels, this is um, one thing you can do. Because they have such similar um, clip art and um, looks to them, K1 and 2, you can um, use it as a big differentiation tote. Okay, so... Um, Monthly math centers, K1 and 2, seasonal and spiral review. They also give you 10 journals and 10 printables. The 10 journals and the 10 printables do not overlap with any other sets that I have. So if you own other sets of mine and you're worried that you're going to buy it and it's going to have the same pages in there, no worries. It doesn't. Now, let's talk about a different set. Let's talk about... Third and fourth, before I jump into another set here. All right, third and fourth. I have packaged it a little different, but it's the same. Third and fourth, I have centers by strand. Ooh, the light, sorry. So, here's an example of the labels that I printed out for third grade. So, we've got place value, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, and so on. And these sets, um, there are nine of them. That will give you the whole year of centers. So there's 10 centers per math strand, and you can buy just, I just want place value, or I just want multiplication, whatever it might be, or you can buy the bundle for the year. Um, they are meant to be run on colored paper. So there are some that are color, but a majority of them, you would run them on colored paper and then put the recording sheets with them. So third and fourth both look like this. This is what the bundle would look like. It has all nine math strands, and you get 10 for each one with recording sheets. Okay, that's third and fourth by strand. They're not seasonal, and um, they do not spiral review. But you can teach them in any order if you want to Mix up your strands. All right, so now we're gonna jump back to K1 and 2, and I'm gonna show you a set called Stations by Standard. These are by strand, so that you're looking at the geometry st strand here. Um, and again, you can they can be K1 or 2, so each grade level has their own set. Now, the difference here, is that it is not seasonal, it is by strand, but I still made them as fun and engaging as humanly possible. I think they're precious and fun. Um, you get 15 in the stations by standard, whereas in the monthly ones you get 10. Um, the stations by standard does not have recording sheets, it does not have printables or journals. So it's going to be, if you need to match, if you like the strand and the matching, like in the numbers notebook, you're probably going to like the stations by standard. Because if you want all of your stations to match what you're doing at small group, then you'll probably want to pick the one that's by strand. So here's another example of stations by standard. Um, this one is second grade, so these are all the money stations. So it's going to cover coins money, personal financial literacy, all of those um, math standards that you have for your grade level. Um, that's going to be, again, stations by standard. You can do them in any order and you get 15. Um, here's another peek at those for kinder. I'm trying to show all the grade levels. Here's the comparing numbers unit. Um, and these labels are free downloads in my store. You can, and I just like to put them in Ziplocs. And I like the scrapbooking. Broke it. I like the scrapbooking boxes because they hold the baggies. Um, so the activity goes there. Fun little tip. You can print the covers um, at 80% if you want. If you're really just kind of going crazy and prepping for the summer. Um, but those, again, are it's going to give you 15 centers by strand. So this was the comparing number strand for kinder. And those are called 
stations by standard. Okay, there's one more set of stations that uh, are center sets that I have, um, and they're new. So right now they are available for first grade. These are called right and white math centers. And this is the place by you said I'm uh, about to post it probably later today, maybe tomorrow. Um, these are my lowest prep centers. Um, the focus here was to be able to come up with activities that would slide into a pocket sleeve and have low or no prep. Um, and then because they're working on a pocket sleeve, which is a, like erasable, um, there is a little book that will give you a recording sheet activity for each station that students go to. And this is something that you can make it into a book or simply just have the little sheets there with the station. And then students fill that out and put it in their math folder as they go through those different um, stations. And that one is called Write and Wipe. Again, right now it's only first grade and the bundle is almost complete. I've got a lot to upload, but um, the activities are looking awesome and they're almost complete. This one, again, is by strand, so it's not seasonal. Um, but like, like Stations by Standard, I always try to choose fun and exciting ways for students to practice the skills so it's um, as engaging as possible while still helping them to work through those math skills. So lots of fun clip art and exciting activities to do. All right, so this kind of gives you a glimpse at MathStack and the types of activities out for that. Please be, um, be sharing those comments and questions that you still have because I can answer you in the comments if I haven't been clear about something. And I hope this has helped clarify some of your questions that I've been getting and helps you get excited about math centers. Bye.